I love that uh, shot, actually. Amen. Sincere in their fear. No. Um, and this is the, the passage, uh, part of John 15 is the vine and the branches. And in case you're not familiar with that, that's where Jesus is saying, I'm the vine, you're the branch. Learn how to abide, or, or some translations say, remain in me. And um, it has this clear result that if you do that, you will bear fruit. Um, and then he gives the, the negative side of it. But if you don't, uh, apart from me, you can do nothing. And um, when I'm being real honest, like there's a part of me that's like, wait, Jesus, like you mean nothing? Like there's a, there's a part of me that feels like I could do something. Like maybe it's not a lot, but like I've got a little bit. And I think, I think Jesus is getting at like the real kingdom fruitfulness. Like this, he, I think he's talking more about like the stuff that lasts, the stuff that counts. And um, coming out of like a season like we've had these last couple of years, like we're fatigued. Um, a lot of us are confused. We're trying to figure out how to chart the new way forward. And there's, I see a lot of conversation that's in the area of like strategy which I'm all for, I think real strat strategically myself, um, kind of, but kind of the anti-strategy is to learn how to remain and how to abide. And that often is like the upside down way where we wanna go out and be busy and we wanna do things. And Jesus is saying, no, I want you to do things, but it just has to be rooted in relationship with me. Like you, this is one of those things you can't get the ordering wrong. So you can't go do your thing and then just ask me to bless it. Like you have to get the ordering right and learn how to remain in me because it, you've never seen a branch abiding in the vine that's like struggling. Um, like in fact, branches that are abiding in the vine, they look like their outward appearance is they look healthy. They're green, they're, they're producing fruit. And I think it's important that we think about that of like, we're in this fatigue season. Maybe Jesus is just inviting us to get away, like to get back to the secret place, to not be inactive or passive, but to like to actively seek him in new ways because he just knows like, he knows that's the way forward. And um, what I've seen in my life is that actually doesn't lead me to this like real passive lifestyle. It just gives me different vision and perspective on the strategies that I then step into, you know? And um, I just wonder what th what things the Lord might have for us, like how he might, you know, reveal greater wisdom for the days ahead, if that became the regular rhythm. But the danger is we'll be so uh, maybe fearful or anxious about how to chart this way forward that we'll neglect this remaining and abiding sense because we feel the pressure. I mean, I, I talk to pastors that, and I feel it myself, like we feel the pressure to solve the problem, you know, that are in front of us. And we're, we kind of have a responsibility to be a part of the solution. But if we get, if we just let that weigh on us so much, um, my tendency is to, you know, pull myself up by my own bootstraps, so to speak, and get into like getting it done mode and neglecting being with Jesus. And I think Jesus is inviting us to, to participate for sure, but out of this abiding kind of way of life.